Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how we help children develop a really secure foundational understanding of fractions that will set them up brilliantly for their future maths. I'm going to explain the work it's wise to do with number lines to help children build a really secure number line model of fractions and I'll also introduce the circular structure of fractions and explain the exercises that it's great to do with that. I'll cover topics including introducing equivalent fractions and mixed numbers. So if you already understand all that and you don't need this video, here's the skip link to your next video which is on finding fractions of amounts. And if you missed the video on number lines, it's quite a useful one to watch before you watch this video, so here's a link to that now. Okay, let's have a look at circular fractions first. Of course you can make your own circular fractions if you've just got a pair of compasses and some card and a protractor to measure angles. But if you can possibly get hold of it, I really recommend this resource here. This is Pizza Fraction Fun from Learning Resources. It's not particularly expensive. And the pizza parts are great because they're really well cut. So when you fit together fractions, they do fit together perfectly and you know if you've done things right. They're blank on one side, just with pizza toppings, and on the other side they've got the unit fractions that each part represents. Unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator is one. And in this kit you get halves, thirds, quarters, fifths, sixths, eighths, tenths and twelfths, which is a really good combination of parts to work with. This is actually sold as a game. I just chuck out the game parts. I just found one earlier. Never use them. I've never found kids are interested in them. They are fascinated by actually just playing with the parts and exploring this concept of building fractional parts together. So the first exercise is just to encourage them to find lots of different ways to create whole pizzas. They might put together three thirds to make a pizza and you can talk about that. Three thirds make a whole, notate it maybe. One third plus one third plus one third equals one. So they get familiar with that kind of notation. They may well manage something like a half and a sixth and a third and come to discover that that makes one whole and you can discuss that and notate it. And as you play with this, they'll come to see that you can sometimes replace one fraction with something else. So a third could be replaced with two sixths. You can discuss that and introduce the idea of equivalent fractions. One third is the same as two sixths. They are equivalent fractions. So that idea is introduced very, very early and becomes second nature to children who just absorb vocabulary and ideas when they're in a really practical multi-sensorial context like this. It's great to ask children how many halves in a whole, how many thirds in a whole, how many quarters in a whole, how many fifths in a whole and so on. And then to ask them the question, which is bigger, a fifth or a sixth? And there's a real cognitive conflict there because they want to think that six is bigger than five and the sixth is bigger than a fifth. But of course it isn't because with sixths, the pizza is split into more parts. Therefore, the parts are smaller. It's really important to wrestle with this idea because it teases out specific awarenesses that will help them visualise their fractions in the future. So there's plenty of really great fun work in that and it's hugely valuable and worthwhile. The more that children can play with fractions at this age, the more confidence they're going to have, but more importantly, the more they're going to believe they can visualise fraction questions and they're not just abstract processes they need to work through. So children need to be able to see fractions within circles, but they also need to be able to see them on the number line. Now, when we worked with the number line before, we started counting in steps of one and then gradually increased the size of the step. Now we are going to decrease the size of the step by expanding out the size of one. So if we start at zero and put one here, we can 
ask children. If that's zero and that's one, what's this? When we're thinking about fractions, if they've done some decimals or percentages, just put that aside for now. And hopefully they'll see that's a half. And we can link that half to their understanding of a half from the circles. And we can talk about how we're counting in steps of a half. So we can talk about how the one is two halves. And then we can ask, well, what's the next result going to be? And there's a lovely bit of exploration here. If you build it with halves, it's difficult for me to hold this up, but there are three halves here. And that leads to the idea that this can be three halves, but it can also be one and a half. And these two values are the same size. And we can carry on exploring this sequence in this way. The next result will be four halves, but it will also be two. And we can write it either way, four halves or two. And once we've played around with that for a while, we can start again. And this time we're gonna make one even wider and talk about these steps. If it takes us three steps to get to one, how big is each step? And if you give children the pizza parts, it's easier for them to come to the conclusion that that step might be one third. And we can explore two thirds, how one is three thirds, and how the next step is four thirds, or one and one third. And then we can carry on. What's happening now? What are the steps now? And with the aid of the circular parts or your pizza parts, the children should come to deeply understand that these steps are one quarter. And so we put one quarter here. And then what goes here? Is it two quarters or is it a half? We can discuss that. And of course, it's both because they are equivalent fractions. And then we have three quarters and this, well, is that one or four quarters or two halves? And we're knitting together all those images and those ideas and both the circular structure of fractions and the linear structure of fractions, which you're seeing on this number line. And we can carry on. We can talk about, well, what's going to be there? If we're counting in quarters, what will be there? And of course, it's one and two quarters or one and a half can build it with pizzas, we can exchange parts, use equivalent fractions. And then we can carry on and expand this out and talk about fifths and sixths and sevenths and eighths and so on. It's best to focus on the fractional steps you've got pizza parts for and to keep it so visual. And the final step at this stage is to have zero at one end of the line and one at the other. And we'll talk about counting in tenths. We'll see that five tenths are a half when we build them. And that's going to set us up for our switch to decimal numbers. And I'll put a link to that video when I've created it later this week. Although this is a great way to teach fractions initially, it does lead to a problem in the future that we've changed the size of one. Therefore, if we look at this, it kind of appears like a third and a quarter are the same size as each other and are the same size as one tenth. Because we've also used the circular fractions where the size of one is controlled, this shouldn't be a problem. So once you've built those two models of fractions for children, the circular model and the number line model, and worked on them, there are a couple of other things you need to cover. One is you need to cover that fractional parts must be the same size. So that means if you draw a shape and you cut it in half like that, your child should instantly recognise that they are not halves. It's not fair. Therefore, the fractions don't work in that way. And similarly with thirds and a quarter, the parts have got to be equal. 
And if they're bored, then just make sure you share something with them that they really want and you agree to share it in half between you and them and you give them the smaller half. That will quickly lead to the discussion you're looking to have. And the other thing is that to check that they're correctly understanding fraction notation, that the bottom number, the denominator, tells you how many parts you're splitting your object or quantity into fairly. And this number tells you how many of those parts you've got. This is a non-unit fraction because this number isn't one. So make sure you do a little bit of work with non-unit fractions, checking they can represent them with pizzas and maybe talking about them with measures such as lengths or weights, getting them to estimate three quarters of an amount. And that's a great way of checking. They've got a really deep, transferable, structural understanding of fractions. So your takeaways from this video is that you need to carefully develop a circular understanding of fractions in children's imaginations that they can access and also a number line structure of fractions and you use those to develop ideas of equivalent fractions and mixed numbers so that children deeply understand what those are. They need to understand that the parts of a fraction must be equal and they need to understand fraction notation including for non-unit fractions and they should start to be able to apply that to work with different measures such as lengths and weights you should see that they've got some sense, some deep sense of what they're doing as they try to find a specific fraction of an amount. If you've any thoughts or comments or questions about this video, please do comment on YouTube. I have now passed a thousand subscribers and I did promise that when I did that, I would live stream. So from this Sunday, I will be live streaming on a regular basis. I hope all being well, God willing, inshallah. So please do keep your questions coming in the comments and I will be trying to address them live. And I'll put information about the timings of those live streams in this channel description. As always, if you've friends or people you think would enjoy these videos in this channel, please do recommend it to them. And please do invite them to join us on the live stream. Thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed already. I will do my best to do justice to this amazing opportunity that you're giving me. I hope you'll join me soon for the next video, which will be about finding fractions of amounts. Bye for now.